Are you ready? To wake up your spirits? I love a spritz. It's a seasonless beverage to be consumed year round. Really beautiful, bright, and refreshing at all times, especially with Lillet and GH Mom. But the problem with the spritz is that most of them are sad, flabby, flat, undercarbonated. But there's a better drinks method for making sure that they're bright, crisp, carbonated, Everything's super fluffy every single time, and it involves forced carbonation. It starts with building a spritz. It starts with one ounce of just plain flat water. With this method, you don't even have to start with carbonated water. Two ounces of Lillet. My favorite aperitif wine. And three ounces of GH Mum Champagne, only the fanciest. Ounce and a half. And three. Now most spritzes would be complete at this point. It'd already be in a wine glass with ice and you'd cut a lemon twist and call it a day, but we're not done. There's a secret ingredient that I like to add. It's an ingredient called champagne acid. Now this is a 6% solution of 3% lactic and 3% tartaric acids dissolved together in water. Now what this yields is the brightness of champagne without adding any additional wine-based ingredients. It's meant to mimic the process called malolactic fermentation that happens in the cellar of many wineries. The malic acid that's present in fresh grape juice is converted via fermentation to lactic and tartaric acids. This is a process that's very common in champagne making, which is why we call it champagne acid. Really fun way to add brightness. So, let's make champagne acid. Start with three grams of lactic acid. And three grams of tartaric acid. To that, we're going to add 94 grams of water. It's a 6% solution. Perfect. Give that a quick shake to combine. Now just for reference, this is a 6% acidity, the same acid level, although the acids are different, same acid level as lemon juice and lime juice. Once it's dissolved, you're ready to go. For a spritz, because Lillet and GH Mum already have some acid in them, I like to simply add a quarter of an ounce. It's just gonna wake everything up, make those bubbles pop, have this creamy mouthfeel, additional richness, brightness, acidity. You're gonna be so happy, your guests are gonna be so happy. The drink is so much more delicious. So just a quarter of an ounce. Now at this point, we're ready to carbonate. What today's all about. One of my favorite techniques. So, you're gonna add the entire cocktail to a one liter soda bottle. One liter's just an easy format to find. Sodas often come in one liter bottles. Two liters work too, but this is just a really nice format. It holds about five drinks. So, this is called a carbonator cap. So, screw that on tight. Make sure no air is leaking out. Now what I have here is a hose that's hooked up to a regulator and a CO2 tank. All of this is available relatively easily online. A little bit of Googling and you'll find it. Now, I'm gonna show you this process and then talk about the most important step in carbonation. So, you simply connect the two and shake and CO2 is forced into the solution. But there's one thing I haven't done yet. Chilling. The enemy of bubbles is warmth. I'll say it again. The enemy of bubbles is warmth. Get it as cold as possible. 
The other main enemy of carbonation is nucleation sites. Now that's little solid particles or something on the interior of a glass, like a, a little nick or a scrape, anywhere that a bubble can form. Now ice is a nucleation site, but it also is providing chilling, so it's the one that I'll allow you to get away with. But this is why when you add fresh juice to a, a spritz or anything carbonated, you see all these bubbles form around like the pulpiness of the juice that you added. That's why clarification is a great technique in spritz making. And my spritz is ice, 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 ice cold, so now it's ready to actually carbonate. So, each time you carbonate something from flat, you're gonna wanna hit it with CO2 three times and allow at least a minute between uh, carbonation sessions. That allows the CO2 to really dissolve into solution and it makes sure that the drink is, is as fluffy as you want it to be. and we can carbonate again. Great. So, let's ice down a wine glass. Let's have a spritz. But before we do, I'll cut a garnish. The last thing I wanna do before I serve this drink is pour the liquid, because I want my guests to have the biggest, roundest, brightest bubbles all over their mouth and be so happy. So fluffy, so carbonated, delicious. Nice big long lemon twist. All right, let's get some ice in the glass. Ice in a big beautiful burgundy bowl. Slowly and lovingly open that spritz. The other great thing about this is you can make a big batch beforehand, have it all carbonated, and then just recarbonate throughout the night so every guest gets a perfectly fluffy spritz and you don't have to do any extra work at your party. Beautiful. Beautiful twist. Smells like better drinks. <sighs> Delicious. If you have any questions or comments or want to know more about carbonation or champagne acid or any of the techniques we used, talked about, nucleation sites, anything you want to know, feel free to reach out in the comments. Yo, this is like mad good. Like, I don't know if you know this about me, but I make like a really good spread. I should have made two. You guys want some? <laughs>